London's underground rail network turns 150 years old this week. On January the 9th, 1863, London's Tube opened the world's first subterranean railway covering six kilometres between Paddington and Farringdon Street. Overcrowded streets prompted Victorian engineers to dig underground rail tunnels in a feat of engineering which would eventually be copied around the world. Like so much the Victorians did, Britain found a solution and the rest of the world has copied it. The, the downside of that is because we went first, we didn't, weren't able to learn from the mistakes of others. So almost all the other systems have got two tracks each way, so you can keep one running through the night while you work on the other. And so you don't have the problem we've got of always having to have a four or five hour shutdown. Experts agree that without the tube, London would never have turned into the metropolis that it is today. During World War II and the German bombing of London, the tube's tunnels and platforms provided safe haven for people seeking shelter from Adolf Hitler's bombs. However, today's Londoners have very different concerns from those of their predecessors in the 1940s. With amazing improvements of uh, the Northern, the Piccadilly lines, we're br bringing in air-conditioned trains and much more automated systems that should improve people's ride. The Tube saw its most tragic day in July 2005, when Islamic fundamentalists blew themselves up on three trains and a bus in central London, killing 52 civilians. These attacks forced Transport for London to undertake major localised repair work, but in the long term more far-reaching changes are needed. London doesn't actually have enough tube lines. We're going to get Crossrail, we've got the Thameslink improvements, but we really need to get cracking on devising at least two more tube lines to cope with the demand in the 21st century. Londoners rely heavily on the tube and it carries more passengers each day than the whole of the UK's other rail networks. Decades of underinvestment means the Tube is in need of vital repair and upgrade works. But this week, all focus is on celebrating the system which has served Britain's capital so well for the past 150 years.